TIG welding in less than 15 minutes. For the basic setup, you're gonna need a welder, gas and regulator, tungsten, filler rod, and a TIG torch. If you've already got a DC or inverter style stick machine, great, that will work. Now for the gas, it has to be 100% argon. Tungsten. Now here's where we get into a ton of different colors, which each color represents pretty much a slightly different composition. Really one of the biggest questions most people have starting out is what color do you need for steel or what color is best for aluminum? And I'll tell you what, that's not the right question. Just pulling up some of these charts, you can see it doesn't even have materials listed. It has either whether it's AC capable or DC or sometimes both. So just go with one that can do both and you're good. But recently I found a little color called chartreuse. Now. To be honest, I don't even know what the heck color that is. It's like a little green, blue, yellowish. Either way, it's just another flavor of tungsten that can do both AC or DC. Now to go along with tungsten, there are different sizes or diameter. Just remember thinner material, go on the smaller end. If you're gonna be doing thicker, well, obviously bump it up. If you want one, just a general purpose size that can get you through a lot, 330 seconds. It's typically really all I use. Once you get your tungsten, you will need to grind the tip to a point. You can go simple just with an angle grinder and just spinning it with your hands, or I like using a bench grinder and chucking it up to a drill gets you a nice, perfect point. Filler rod. TIG welding, you need to add that filler material to build up your weld. Simple enough, right? Well, just like with tungsten, there are so many different types of filler rod you can get. Just don't start off TIG welding aluminum, okay? Make your life easy, just go with steel. As you can imagine, there are tons of different others within steel, but if you were just starting out, pick up ER70 S-2. Now, just like with your tungsten, how we had different sizes or diameter, you know, the thinner for smaller, bigger for uh, thicker material, it's the same with filler rod. And I like keeping it simple, and so I go right in the middle of the range with 332nd as well. On to the TIG torch. Now, there are a ton of different options. I'm telling you right now, start off with a 17V. 17 is just the size. There's lots of different sizes. 17 is kind of right in the middle. The important part is a V. What that designates is, well, it's a valve. So if you open and close it, you'll have gas coming through it. So on the other end, you need a gas input. Well, we picked up a bare bones cheap machine that doesn't have gas inlets or outlets, you know, solenoids to turn it off and on. So most of them will just come with a very just typical gas hookup. So you are gonna hook this directly up to your gas regulator or flow meter. The other thing you'll need to look for when getting a TIG torch is the type of connection to the machine. So there's, I would say probably 90% of them actually come with what's called a DINS connection. Now within this style of connection, you have two different sizes. Either it's, I don't know why it's a range, but it's like a 10 to 25, that's the smaller one, or a 35 to 50 is the bigger one. So this little guy, it's got the smaller style and well, you simply put it in the negative terminal. Other parts of the TIG torch, is well, you, this little uh, white part, that's just an insulator. Then we got back caps, you know, collets and cups, all that. So the collet body is going to simply thread into the front part of the TIG torch. Next, we're gonna find one of these collets that actually fit the tungsten diameter that you got. So I'm assuming one of these is going to be, yep, this last one right here. 332nd, that's what size tungsten I have, so that should just slide right in there. And then this is going to go into the back portion. You have to use a back cap because as you thread this in and cinch down, that will actually crimp down and tighten down onto the tungsten so it doesn't move. Now I know you've seen these pretty little pink cups. They all have numbers on them and that just designates the size of diameter opening. So in a 16th of an inch. So this five, this opening is five sixteenths. All of these will just thread onto that collet body. And when you thread it on, don't need to cinch down. It really is just a ceramic type body. Then you're pretty much there, except you'll probably notice the tungsten sticking out. And of course the golden question is, 
How much stick out do you need? Go with the diameter of cup size you're going with as for a stick out. So we got 5 16 Let's just loosen this back cap up. It's not an exact science. So let's just put that back in there to eyeball about 5 16 Tighten the back cap up and we're ready to go. First, you gotta set up the machine. You are going to hook up the TIG torch to the negative terminal and then your ground or earth clamp to the positive. So this would be considered a DCEN type polarity. With these cheaper machines, you're most likely gonna get a scratch style start. And that's when you, whoop. That is when you uh, literally have to strike your tungsten against the workpiece to create that arc. Uh, the next step up would be a lift. Don't forget to turn on your gas. Notice that I touched the workpiece and then lifted off. So this is a true lift style start. For this first weld, I'm actually just getting a fill for the torch and I'm not even adding any filler material. Now, I would actually suggest if you're just starting out to do a whole bunch of these coupons without even any material. The next step is to add some filler material. To end the welds, you may notice that I'm kind of whipping it out of the way, but I'm quickly putting it right back down. And that's because without a you know foot pedal or switch to turn it off, you need to be able to get gas coverage back on that molten weld until it totally solidifies. For a couple hundred bucks setup and to be able to dip your toes into the TIG world, really, there's not much to complain about. Let's step up to the dedicated TIG machine. Well, this machine's a bigger machine because it's an AC-DC machine. So it can output AC or DC. And the whole deal with that is, if you want to do aluminum, you need an AC output machine. Now next up is how you actually start the arc. We talked about bare bones, it's just that scratch style where you have to touch the tungsten to the workpiece, or the lift where you actually touch it and pull up. The best would be a high frequency start. All you have to do is get your tungsten close to your workpiece, you pull the trigger, and then you're good. Now to actually start the machine and going with the finger switch, you'll actually hear the little solenoid for the gas because I have pre-flow uh, set before the high frequency start. So you can actually hear the little solenoid. So that would be starting that gas flow. And if I keep holding it down, you're gonna hear that high frequency start go. And then as soon as I let go of the finger switch, then that kills your arc and you still want to hold it over your weld until it solidifies, but that's how the finger switch goes. And the greatest upgrade would be to a foot pedal. Now, it is similar to a finger switch. The, this isn't connected. I disconnected it. But it, it acts like it with a plus, you know? So, for example, if I push it down, you'll hear the solenoid for the gas, and then you'll hear the high frequency start. Let off. It cuts everything. And here's where it's awesome. It has amperage control. So as I push all the way down, it's gonna put out whatever my max on the machine is set to. It's gonna put out that full amperage. Well, that's great at the beginning. I can have it nice and hot. And then going down through my weld, when I see that it's getting too hot, I can let off the foot pedal and then it will just decrease that amperage and then let all the way off and it cuts it out. And that is how you get those beautiful, good looking, consistent TIG welds. I would suggest this is a perfect time to step it up to a stubby gas lens kit. Now some of the advantages of going to a stubby kit versus, you know, just the regular stock is it's stubby, everything's shorter. So you can definitely get into a lot tighter uh, spaces. Also with bigger cups, uh, you know, the visual, you also can have a longer stick out with a bigger cup. You can get into a lot tighter spaces and just think of the better control you get being that much closer to your workpiece. We could spend hours on technique, but here's some tips just to get you going. Go straight down at a 90, clock it back 10 to 15. Also being clocked back allows you to get your filler rod in there. And then this is going to be a push style weld. 
Um, you know what, whether you're doing some curly cues, some circles, or just keeping it as steady as possible, those are things you get to practice and work on just to get better. But now you kind of know the features or options you can get. The R Captain, not sponsored, but it is a great introduction machine that has all of those settings included for a reasonable price. Go have fun TIG welding. I'm Mechmaster. We'll see you next time.